Actually, that's a, maybe you say, 
it's so simple, but this is my motivation. And then we make we make this kind of sample. So these are just a trier of magnetic material, so called amolo, nickelium alloy, and copper aluminum spitzel, and again amolo. So you can see this kind of trier structure in the picture of Professor Horner. So this kind of structure shows giant magnet resistance effect, which can be used for reading it of ATDD. Anyway, we made this kind of sample and measured the resistance with a function of external field. So we have the resistance as a function of external field. So you see the change in resistance for parallel magnetization configuration and anti-parallel magnetization configuration. So the system showed giant magnet resistance. But you notice there is a step here. What is this? The step height is just one to two. The reason for this step is this kind of defect in your device. We call this net. This is this was artificially introduced based on our design. And what this resistance measurement saying is now we have a new creation of a domain wall in a shorter part anywhere in this region, maybe this larger area, and it propagates from left to right. However, it was pin at this name. And if you increase the system of further, then this pin your domain wall is not a pin and again propagate from the end at the end of this electrode. Okay. So this is real simple resistance measurement, but this result set us we have now nucleation of domain and we have domain of motion. It's a, it's expected a single domain of motion. So that's okay. Now, I, I, I did my dream here. And then again, we prepared the trial sample. And you see here again GMR effect. However, there's no data between anti parallel state to parallel state or circle. It's very easy. You put your electrode into your oscilloscope and just measure the out of voltage is a function of now time. Then you see the resistance shows also linear decrease in time. So <coughs> this is a real time measurement of a single domain of motion from here to zero. And from which you can determine the domain of uh, velocity like this. It's a uh, oh, okay, very high, almost 700 kilometer per hour. That's much much faster than the Shinkansen. <laughs> I imagine maybe you use Shinkansen from Tokyo to say that. No. It's very fast, but the domain of very tiny one, but it's very close. Okay. Then, now I showed the result uh, domain of motion detection by the resistance medium. So we see the spin dynamics of domain wall through the electric rate. Then please imagine the reverse term. Magnetization dynamics to resistance or electricity, the reverse. If you inject electric current through your magnetic wire, what's happening? 
can we excite some spin dynamics? Yes. So this is a cartoon which explains the mechanism of current in this domain of motion. So here we have a, a wire, some wire with two domains. In between, we have a domain wall. This that arrow indicates the local magnetic moment. In the case of ion or cobalt, then it shows the uh, 3D here. When you inject your electric current, so your conduction electron is now moving from left to right. And this blue arrow indicates the spin direction of your conduction electron. And here we assume there is the interaction between this conduction electron spin and local moment called SD interaction. So by this interaction, the spin of conductor electron just follow the direction of local moment at it. I mean through this trick, the spin direction of conduction electron is now rotating into anti-clockwise. And you have to think about the uh, conservation of angular momentum. So there is a change in angular momentum in your conductor electron spin. It means the change in angular momentum should transfer to this data of local moment. It means this data row should rotate clockwise. So if you write the cartoon to change this direction to clockwise, then you see. Now you have a displacement of a domain. This is a very simple concept. But I think revolutionary idea. Not a magnetic field, but using electric current, you can change the magnetic state, which has been predicted by Professor Luc Bergier in 1984. Okay. As 20 years after, we did the demonstration that this phenomenon is true. So here I show the success of initial magnetic force mic MFM, magnetic force microscope. So here, it each here shows the one shot of MF image. Here you can see the domain wall is a dark corner. And if you ingest the current from right to left, then you see your domain wall is spread from here to there. Like that. So now you can move a domain wall by electric car. So here, okay. So let's imagine. Okay, now we can move a domain wall by magnetic field and electric current as well. Now what's the difference? So please imagine now we have a three domain here. And what happened? If you apply some off field right wall, then apparently this right wall from field expand these two red digits. Mean the initiation of your domain. However, if we use as a kind, you can move domain wall in the same direction. That's why people are now proposing several devices using current in this domain of motion. So maybe you know this one. This is a very famous uh, called base of memory proposed by IBM. So here you can see the light uh, head and the information is stored as a domain. And the other proposal is from uh, NEC company, Japanese company. They propose this kind of set structure for magnetic random access memory. Yeah, it, maybe you know. Magnetic junction, low and high, corresponding to your data, zero or one. The proposal is using current to induce the motion to lighting process. Maybe you can easily see here is the domain wall. If we push this domain wall from here to right, then you are on the first state, so this is lighting. The proposal is to use two 
electric circuit independently for reading and writing. Because this receptor has an independent circuit for reading and writing, this is very fast. And the guy in NVC proposed to replace static random access memory, which is the fastest memory in your computer, but volatile by this non-volatile first multi-random access memory. Okay. So to make such kind of uh, real device, there are several requirements. First of all, so, as we heard in a lecture by Professor Sono, we need thermal stability, typically six times room temperature uh, thermalization to have a 10 years retention. The second, lower current is better to reduce the operational power. And high availability is better to get a high, uh, high frequency operation. To do so, we need the mechanism of quantum motion, and we should explore new material for these requirements. So, there are several mechanisms for the current instrumental motion. This is one of them, and this is, I think, is the most simple and beautiful mechanism. What's up? Okay, if you make a wire with perpendicular material like this material like this, here you have a domain wall, then you have so-called group type domain wall structure, which means the memory the moment inside the domain wall is perpendicular to the wire X like this. <coughs> the reason for this group type domain wall we get is that if you have the other, another type, called real-type domain wall, like that, then you have magnetic charges here and there, which increases magnetostatic energy in the system. That's why the system prefers the lower energy state for the domain wall. And now you inject your current through this domain wall, then your conductor electric spin exerts the torque on the magnetic moment in a domain wall which tilts this magnetic moment from this angle to this angle. As I said, if you tilt the magnetic moment from here to there, it means you now increase the energy of the system, so the high energy. So we need larger current from here to there. But once you overcome the highest energy state, it's Nail type domain wall structure, yeah. then you overcome again and again and again. It means there is a precession motion of the domain wall here, or magnetic moment inside the domain wall. Okay? And with that, this, moment, this domain wall is now moving downward. So, this simple theory predicts the domain wall moves with precession motion and the direction of domain motion is along electron flow, and more importantly, there should be the intrinsic special current density to move a domain wall because of the energy difference between these domain wall structures. So, <coughs> and then the answer is very simple. Because the special is related to the energy difference, so this energy difference, K-part, determines the special current density. So, how can we prove this is true? We did very simple experiment. Okay, as I said, now we have a lot of domain wall because of the uh, <coughs> magnetostatic energy in the structure. Then please imagine what happens if you reduce the wire dimension, wire width, extremely narrow. Then you have magnetic charges here in a block type domain wall, it means now you have higher energy state for block type domain wall than in the nail type domain wall. Okay, now you have to overcome the energy of block type domain wall. So the system should be vice versa. So it means in between from wide to narrow, we should have the geometry 
in which we have same energy for two types of network. And there's no energy difference. It means, in principle, theoretically, we have no threshold. We can move the domain very easily to that concept. And also, you can see the change in the domain structure from block to net. So we did, by changing a while with, we check the threshold density for the domain of motion and check the domain of structure. Okay, this is the sample. Maybe I should skip. Okay. So this is the device structure. Then you see the overlying the wire here. And you can create the domain of by injecting a current through this wire, which creates local electric field here. And create a domain wall here is moved by the injection current through the other wire. And the motion of the domain wall can be easily detected just by measuring all the distance. Because this covert wire shows uh, enormous core resistance, which corresponds to the uh, rotation direction upward or downward, just beneath this uh, whole electrode. Then we can determine the state current density or the amount of motion, so either function or wire width. So you see here at around 70 or 80 nanometers wire width, you see the minimum of the current density for the amount of motion. It's good. And we measure the resistance of a single domain wall. Then you see in the wide region, the domain wall resistance is very close to zero. However, in the narrowest area, you have finite the resistance of about 0.44. And interestingly, you see two hisses come in between. So these resistance correspond to narrow resistance and the group type of resistance. So you see the change in domain wall structure from group to net by reducing the wire of this. So everything is consider consistent with the cell. Then, yeah. So let's show the formal result, which shows the current density for the domain of motion as a function while with green. Green is the depending field of a domain wall. What is the depending field? Experimentally, we introduce a domain wall in a wire, and then we increase the external magnetic field. And at some point, at some external field, a domain wall is pin and move. That's a depending field. And you see, this depending field of domain wall is increasing with decreasing wire width. I think this is a kind of due to the defect of the side wall of our wire. Because we have microfunction application technique, so it always has some defects around the uh, edge. The, the effect of edge is uh, important, more important in a narrow way. Important here is that uh, there is no correlation between the threshold density and the definitive field. It means we can independently control the threshold density which is very important for low power for the operation and the thermal stability. The thermal stability is related to the pin. So you can uh, have a compatibility of low power operation and high thermal stability. Okay. And the good news, we have more. So this is our, our, our social candidacy as a function of external field. So we did the current in this domain wall motion. However, simultaneously, <coughs> we apply external field. It's constant, very good. Even if we, we have external disturbance of our field in this atmosphere, so our, our, our device uh, works correctly. And also, the domain ability as I found to external field shows constant. Again, it's good news. <coughs> Okay, so, so up to now, we 
we saw the result of the magnetic volume. I'm going to the next topic, magnetic vortex structure. Okay, as I said, this stress curve is so much complicated for me. So next one is I want to make a very small magnet by using micro complicated technique to have a single domain state. So this is the original motivation. By making a small magnet, maybe you can have a single domain. And original idea is to investigate the interaction between these disks. And I did this experiment with my also, and so he suspected my idea. <laughs> you think we have a single domain state in your device, in our sample? He, 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 how to say, <laughs> he claimed to me to see what's happened inside our disk by using MFM. This is the result. Very <laughs> strange. As you know, by using mass force microscopy, you can see the charge, positive and negative, as a bright or dark contrast. If we have a single domain, then you have a bright spot here and dark spot here. However, what you see here in your system, just a one bright or dark spot at the center of our disk. What does it mean? So this means we have a magnetic charge, positive magnetic charge here and a, a, a negative magnetic charge here. Can you imagine what kind of structure does it have? The answer is this kind of vortex structure. As I said, if you have magnetic charge at the edge, then this magnetic charge increases magnetic static energy. So the system prefer to annihilate, to delete the magnetic charge, it means the rotation of magnetic board like this. And at the center of where core, you have uh, magnetic core like this, like this. Okay. Okay, uh, before I show we can manipulate or move a domain of by electron injection, then the next question is how about vortex core? Can we excite some dynamics for a core inside our magnetic disk? Okay, so this is a kind of simulation. So, okay, this beautiful label <coughs> color indicates the direction of magnetic moment in the brain. So now we have uh, this kind of vortex structure. And the peak at the center of this shows Z component of magnetization. It means this magnetic core. And we put an electrode here and there to inject our electrode through and I will show you what's happening in the simulation. Okay. Okay. So now we inject AC current to our system, then we can excite this kind of rotation motion. It's, it's very nice. But, see? So, I'll stop. You can see? the drastic change from up to down. So just by exciting system, by current injection, you can excite this kind of rotation or gyration core. Moreover, you have switching of the direction of core organization. And actually, when I first see this simulation, which has been done by my friend, Professor Nakatani in University of Electrical Communication. 
I told him, okay, it's nice, but I, I cannot believe this result for the switching of <coughs> immunization. Maybe there should be some bad in your microbiome. Oh, so please check. And he checks, check, check, again, again, again. And then he told me, no, there's no, 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 no mistake. Then we have to do the experiment. And actually the experiment was very simple. By using MFM, we can see the direction of our normal core. And then we excite our system by injecting AC current like this. After that, we shift again the direction of the core by using MFM. And this is the result. Okay, can you see here the dark, bright, 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 dark, dark, dark. This success MFM image is taken like that. So it's uh, sometimes you see the change in the contrast from dark to bright or bright to dark. It means by injecting a current, you can change, you can flip the polarization. Okay. Okay, up to now. I've shown we can manipulate such kind of non-collinear spin structure by using electric current or uh, or, or domain wall or mount disks. So anyway, this is the cover of nature of my ideas. We got it. <laughs> <laughs> then, what's the next? What's the next? We now do the excitation in structure by electric current. What the reverse is? It's Can we generate electric current by spin structure dynamics? Especially, we have a very good system. This one, on the board is called. It shows this kind of gyration motion. Okay. So, the next topic is spin motive force, which is generated by the spin dynamics. Okay, I believe. Everybody knows Faraday's law. And this is the Faraday's law when you study in maybe uh, a graduate school. So here, the Faraday's law is written using charge very phase. This is a very phase. The derivative of time derivative of the very phase of charge induces the electric field. Then I would like to introduce spin part of that. For that, we have to have this kind of spin structure. Okay, nonlinear and out of group, out of group component is very important because the very phase of spin is just a solid angle of the non collinear spin structure. Okay. Then, if you have some time derivative of this spin very phase, it means <coughs> just the motion of this spin which change the very phase, the solid angle. In this case, the solid angle is like this. Okay. This change in solid angle of spin Need to change in very phase mean now we have spin dependent motive force. So here we show the up spin, but if we if we have the down spin, then the down spin shows the opposite motion to up spin. So everything depends on spin. To measure it, we use our this system. And we apply AC magnetic field to excite this kind of gyration of our voltage core, and we measure the voltage by using oscilloscope. 
and this is the zero. So, Pana shows experimental result. So, it moves it first as a function of time, and green one shows the result of simulation. The simulation can reproduce very well, including uh, absolute value for obtained emotive source. And if you change the frequency, then you have some visual feature, which is also predicted by simulation. So now, I believe this voltage is coming from spin motives, which is the time derivative of spin variables. Okay. Finally, I'll just show uh, the recent progress in domain of motion. And uh, the uh, domain of motion induced by spin photo. And I guess you heard some feature of this domain of motion in the lecture by Professor Jeff Fitch. And, okay. and there's a more introduction. Okay, maybe I my talk is the last lecture in this summer summer school. I believe you know the spin hole effect. Spin hole effect is a creation of spin current from electric current which flows in a non-magnetic material due to the spin orbit couple. Now you have a spin current, half perpendicular direction, like this. Then, what happens? If we put our magnetic material on top of this non-magnetic material, then we can inject the spin current to the magnetic moment inside the domain wall. And if there is some relative angle between magnetic moment in a domain wall and the direction of injected spin, we should have some torque, which create a domain of motion. Okay. However, there's some problem. So please imagine what happens if we have three domains with two domain walls. Here, downward, up, row, downward. Okay. <coughs> and if a magnetic moment in a domain wall is the same for two domain walls, then the real angle between this magnetic moment and injected spin is the same for both domain walls. It means now we have the same effective magnetic field by spin or injection. It means now we have upward magnetic field. What's up? This effective magnetic field expands the region. So, as in the case of the application of external magnetic field, the domain should annihilate each other. To resolve this circumstance, to resolve this problem, we should have this kind of spin structure. In this case, we have the old native effective magnetic field up, down, up, down, up, down, which move our domain wall in the same direction. So this is the proposal by Andre Chibiru in Paris. What the difference? The difference is chirality. <coughs> In the case of lower panel, we have upward, rightward, downward, leftward, upward. Mean from left to right, we have like oh, clockwise spin structure. It's kind of. So we should have this kind of, kind of spin structure. And this should be stabilized by the Jaroslav scheme of yet interaction. So we need just in schematic like interest. What's up? So this is a high level exchange coupling. 
between two moments at once. So on this high level type spin coupling stabilize the spin parallel spin configuration. That's why we call zero magnet. Okay. But however, if you think about this kind of indirect coupling through non-magnetic path, then you have another exchange coupling. Okay, here we have two magnet atom, and here is uh, another non-magnet atom, like fraction. So we have a relation between the electron wave of magnetic atom and the wave function of normal materials. Then you have indirect coupling between two magnetic atoms through this non-magnetic atom leading to the Jaratinsky Moria interaction. So this interaction prefers tilting of its moment. So this Jaratinsky Moria interaction prefers chiral spin structure. That's why if we have magnetic material like over on platina, then we should have this kind of chiral interaction. So okay, this, so by using this kind of chiral structure, then you can have this kind of memory. Okay. Okay. Then again, according to the proposal under Chabil, there should be a chiral wave type domain wall in our device. But how to confirm? Again, it's very simple. Just to the current induced domain of motion under external field, which is parallel to the y axis. So, what's up? Pretty much, what's up? If you apply magnetic field parallel to the y axis, then, okay, if you apply external to rifle, then you can stabilize this. Magnetic moment. However, this magnetic moment in other domain wall is now unstabilized by the external field rival. <coughs> Finally, if you increase the magnetic field, then you can change the direction of magnetic moment in this domain wall from left to right. Then you have the same situation in the upper field. You break the chirality then you have the reverse domain of motion in this domain wall. So this is a kind, so this is a result for such kind of experiment. So here I plot the domain of velocity as a function of parallel external field. So this parallel field stabilizes this magnetic moment leading to the higher domain of velocity. However, if you reverse the external field, then you see the reduction in domain of velocity, and finally, <coughs> you have negative domain of velocity. So this is a kind of uh, 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 proof that I use the higher level of domain of velocity and spin photons. Okay. okay, then by using this uh, <coughs> mechanism, the people can now move a domain of almost one kilometer per hour per second. Very good. But uh, one thing not good is the uh, relation between <coughs> special current density as a function of uh, 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 ping field. As I said, the ping field relates to the thermal stability. We need higher thermal stability for our device, so we want to increase the deepening field. However, from this experimental result, it means if you increase the thermal stability, then it means we have now a higher current density, which means we have to pay a uh, high power for our device operation. Okay, anyway. As I said, this magnetic field is corresponding to the effective magnetic field due to Jarosinski-Moria interaction which means 
by this kind of experiment, we can now quantify the size, the amplitude of the Earth's Kimboya interaction. So this is the measure of high, uh, how high Earth's Kimboya interaction exists. And we did such kind of experiment by changing the temperature. But you must try. The Jarosinski-Moya interaction shows strong temperature dependence. Okay. The Jarosinski-Moya interaction is an intercooler coupling through the normal wire. And there's no need, there's no direct need requirement. It shows such a strong temperature dependence. So this is a kind of uh, uh, mystery for me. Then we did one side dive through the measurement at spin head. Meanwhile, we found this H2 from IBM groups, the tight resistance, everything. The chiral spin torque arising from proximity induced magnetization. It means the chiral spin torque is proportional to DMI. This paper says jarosinski moria interaction is proportional to induced magnetic moment. In this case, they use cobalt platinum. It means the induced magnetic moment in platinum determine the size of the DMI. And we did the platinum XMCD measurement by which we can determine induced magnetic moment just in platinum. And this is the result. So here, I show again the temperature dependence of DMR, which shows almost twice increased by reducing the temperature from room pressure to 200 K. But however, the invisible moment in the platinum was almost constant by changing the temperature. So we can <coughs> explain this is strong temperature dependence of GMI just by the induced moment, moment in a platinum. Uh, this is a mystery. Mm. Actually, when we did this, this experiment, I'm really excited. It, it, maybe it's very easy to write a paper. Maybe we have a very strong temperature dependence in the induced moment, moment. But, oh my god, no paper. Meanwhile, <laughs> at the last day of the last year, this first print calculation paper appeared. The title is Anatomy of Jones Stimulia Interaction at Cobalt Platinum Interface. So, this is the first print calculation for Jones Stimulia Interaction. And important is in this skill design. Can you see? No direct correlation is found between DMI and proximity induced magnetism in platinum. Wow. It's consistent with an experimental result. Okay, now, now we are going to write a paper, however. Okay. <laughs> What's the origin? <laughs> it's consistent with what? Then, I think this is my last slide. We did a measure the edge of cobalt by <coughs> using uh, XMCD at the AVH of cobalt, we can determine steam magnet moment and also orbital magnet moment. <coughs> and if we do the end of this experiment, then you can also determine the component of perpendicular component and the parallel component of orbital magnet moment. So it's very quite powerful technique. And you can see here. So now, the perpendicular component of orbital magnetic moment shows very similar temperature dependence of the temperature dependence of DMI. So, okay, I cannot say this is our conclusion, but I would say experimentally, there is some relation between orbital and moment and just interaction. This is natural because 
Now we are cobalt and the platinum interfaces. The DMI is an interaction, it's a di indirect interaction through this platinum. And we need spin orbit coupling or platinum to get this indirect coupling. If there is a spin orbit coupling, we should have orbit among more. So it, it's really natural. Then uh, I show you uh, two types of inhomogeneously magnetized one. One is a domain wall. Here I show two types of mechanism for kinetic induced domain wall motion. One is adiabatic spin thrust stroke inside the magnetic wall. The other one is a spin hole stroke, which is created from spin injection from the non magnetic material. And I will show also the, show the correlation between EMI and orbital moment moment. And in the case of my vortex, I show the vortex core direction can be switched by electric excitation. And now we have a spin motive force, which is created by the time derivative of spin very phase. And this is our group photo. I will have some to all members in my group. So with that, thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. So do you have any comments or questions? Thank you for your wonderful talk. I have a question. The 
during a gyration, we are opposite component of magnetization. Oh, so this is transitioning from yeah, yeah. up to down. Yeah, okay. yeah. You see? So that's why we are uh, positive and uh, negative spin module for Oh, that's the one that's actually creating the very phase there. Yeah. Ah, I see. Okay, thank you. One more question. Okay. Is there any question? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much.